Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Songwriters on Process podcast. My name is Benno Papari, and since 2010, I've run the Songwriters on Process website, where you can find more than 200 conversations with songwriters about the creative process. I'm not here to talk about tour stories, band drama, how a band got its name, or favorite foods. My goal is to treat songwriters as writers, plain and simple. This is an intelligent conversation about the writing process between two writers. And today's Songwriters on Process interview is with Sarah Beth Tomberlin, also known as Tomberlin. So this is from an interview we did actually in October of 2020, but so I'm reposting uh, the video version, which you can see on the Songwriters on Process YouTube channel. But this is a timely posting of the podcast version of this because uh, Tomberlin has a new album coming out October, I'm sorry, April April 29th on Saddle Creek, Rec- Saddle Creek Records, and it is called I Don't Know Who Needs to Hear This, and I love the new music that I've heard so far. I love her old music, so this was a lot of fun to talk to uh, Sarah Beth. The word processing came up a lot in my interview with her when she discussed how she writes songs, and she uses songwriting as a way to process the events in her life, uh, much more so than a lot of songwriters have shared with me. So... You know, she said it's difficult to write when things are pleasant in her life. And uh, her quote from the from the interview is, there's no urgency to the process in that case. It's the difficult events that she writes about, and these events require distance before she's able to process them. And she said, songwriting is, he- songwriting is emotional and heavy work. It's not pleasant all the time. There's a lot of, mo- there's a lot of emotional prodding and digging. Um that being said, we had a lot of fun talking. I loved the thoughtfulness thoughtfulness of her responses and just how I could really tell she was thinking about it, what I, what I was asking rather than going through the motions. And I really, um, one of the reasons why I love this interview and we could have talked forever, but uh, so despite kind of the heaviness maybe of the songwriting of the material, uh, we just had a blast. So listen to this. I think you'll really enjoy it. And with that, my interview with Sarah Beth Tomberlin on the Songwriters on Process podcast. Cool. All right. Well, listen, I I always start with this question because I think it's relevant. That is, how good are you? And I think this is the question I've asked all songwriters since March. You know, how good are you with big expanses of time when it comes to writing? So are you better with deadlines? Like, it seems like now we have big expanses of time, you know, that, that since you're not touring, you're not traveling, do you write well when you don't have deadlines or do you need that kind of urgency um, to be more productive as a writer? Um, well, I feel like I can be productive with deadlines, but the work might not be as rich um, or I'm finding for myself. Like, all of this time off, I really needed because I just, my uh, career or whatever in music just happened in a very interesting, unexpected way. So it just kept being like, oh, one tour, another offer for a tour, another, like, and they were all people that I like loved and admired. So I just kept saying, yes. So I toured 10 months out of the year. Yeah. Year. And, um, and then when I, had this time off actually it was at first uh hard because the last show that I played was November 30th like on the Alex G tour and and I was supposed to do the soccer mommy tour and like some south by stuff and I was like actually looking forward to it because I had had time to rest and kind of like process um so but then I found like I needed like I had so much to actually unpack because half of the work I feel like with writing is just like filling filling yourself up with like the information yeah (laughs) and then you need time to process that information and then you need time to put it down and organize it um so I think I'm finding that like the deadlines actually put a pressure on me and so sometimes I feel like the work is rushed therefore not as good to me um but like I feel like I if I have time to let things circulate in my head, it makes more sense than me trying to like blueprint it out. 
music because I'm already doing that in my head. I'm already like able to like be like, oh, this is like even with LP2, which I've been working on for a while, like a lot of the stuff is like the dots are connecting a lot easier because I have time to let it circulate. Like even like the name, like I'm so weirdly obsessed with names and titles of songs and albums, even though I forget them all the time. I mean, part of why Untitled 1 and 2 are on my record before is because I just was like, I don't know a name that fits this song well. And so that's what it's going to be. Um, but even stuff like that, it's like, even in the past month, I've been like, oh, that's what the record's going to be called. Like, this is like what's tying this all together. And it's super exciting, but that comes with time yeah. to like, feel that. So I think like if I set the deadline for myself, it's productive. If somebody else is setting it for me, it's rushed and like maybe not as good. Huh. So two questions, because uh, I've heard this sometimes that some songwriters start with titles. Have you ever have you ever started a song with the title and then worked from there? No. No. OK. Easy but enough. I guess yeah. you are here. That song. I was in a hotel in St. Louis with my parents and I saw the you are here like the, you know, fire escape plan on the back of the door. And I was like that's the song. So maybe, maybe it has like that, like struck something. And then I wrote the rest of the song in the car on the way home. But like, yeah. I didn't, I guess maybe that's the one that I guess that is a title thing where I guess I didn't really think, Oh, that's going to be the title. But I was like, that struck something up for the song. And then it made sense for it to be the title. Yeah. So do you see things, I guess, when you're you know, in a hotel room or driving and, you know, billboard or reading or how often do you read, do you see specific words or phrases or lines or hear someone say something, you go, that's a song. Like that's got to be in a song. That's a song line. I mean, I wish it happened more, um, but it happens a lot. Like I'll write things down in my phone notes or something. It even happened day I was reading a book um, and there was a line and it's like, I'm not going to use that line, but it sparked something in me where it was like, um, I think the line was something of like, there's a symmetry in following a spiral all the way through or something like a Chris Kraus quote. And I was like, oof, like, <laughs> yeah. like Got to work that in, right? Yeah, yeah. I was like, that's, mm -hmm, I feel that. So yeah, um, that happened some. So I interviewed, I think last month, Brian Fallon, you just, mm -hmm. you know, used to be in the Gaslight mm -hmm. Anthem and, and uh, he told me that he goes, if any songwriter ever tells you that they, that they go through the notes app later on in their phone for song lines, they're lying. Like he goes, I use my notes app every day. I've never once gone back to it. He goes, and I thought, my gosh, have I been duped all these years? Because all songwriters tell me they have all of those notes. They have everything that they never go back. So fess I up. Go back. You do go back. See, that's what I, I thought. Back. I thought people do. You do. Yeah. Okay. I go back. There's a lot that I don't go back to, or I go yeah. back and I'm like, that's absolute garbage. <laughs> like, delete. Yeah. Um, but I think it's helpful because it's like a marking of time, just like a journal, you know, even if you don't like, I love it because it's like, what the fuck was I actually thinking about? Cause it can be so vague. And then sometimes I'm like, that's trying to be vague, but it's too presently that thing. So it's helpful for me because it's like, writing it out, out an idea and maybe you do forget about it, but maybe you come back to it and it sparks another idea. Uh, yeah. It might not be that exact same line, but I do go back to things to be like, what was I actually like trying to say? Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you go back when you're stuck? You know, if there are certain things, if you just, if you're in a rut, do you go back and leaf through? I say leaf through, cause I guess, do you also have journals? Are you, do you, how much do you have journals that you write in? I have a journal that I keep that's like a personal journal. And then I have, I just actually bought a new notebook while we've been here for writing my song lyrics down because I do write my notes a lot on my phone or computer, but I like it because obviously with iCloud, it just syncs it. So it pops yeah. up on the computer. And then if I'm like working on a, a song, it's like presently in front of me without having to like flip pages and stuff. But actually, this is the notebook that I have. Uh, uh, excellent. I love the visuals. Let's see. <laughs> This That's, is the songwriting notebook, which I love because it's kind of soft and has this thing for a pen, but yeah. it also lays really flat really well. And I like, I used to write in moleskins a lot, but I hate how they bend and crack. And, and then this is like my personal journal thing. Yeah. 
but it was also like a thing where I would be on tour and be writing a letter or something and rip pages out. So I don't know. It's kind of an all purpose thing. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I want to get better at writing things in a notebook, like lyrically, even ideas and get away from my phone more and more all the time. <laughs> So do those two notebooks ever cross over? Do you ever go back to the personal journal and say, and read through some stuff there and say, yeah, I think there might be a song idea in here. I haven't, but I've thought about doing that more because I think sometimes it's the same as like writing down an idea in your phone where like your work, or at least the way that I journal, I'm like, sometimes I want to like really be specific about this thing happened today. But then some of it, I'm just like, I end up, kind of spiraling and just yeah. working through something. So sometimes there is stuff there that's like, um, I feel like ends up being pretty poetic, even if I don't realize it at the time. But I, I haven't done that a whole lot. I think maybe I, sometimes I read back through my journal and it might spark up something, but I can't really connect anything specifically where I've like, written it down in a journal and then it's become a song lyric. Sometimes maybe that happens subconsciously, but nothing that I'm super aware of. Do you, do you write every day or do you think it's important to write every day? I don't write every day. I mean, I would like to, but I also feel like when I put that stress on myself, it takes away the mystical like yeah. aspect of it. And I do think there is something to the practice of just writing. Like I would like, more so than writing every day, I would like to journal every day. And I keep mm. trying to do, I've tried to do that for years since I was a kid and I'm not consistent at all, but I actually started this morning. That's how I started my day. And I'd been meaning to for like days on end that it would be the end of the day. And I'm just like, I'm tired. Like, I don't want to do this. So. Yeah. But I guess what, you know, that's a very divided answer. Like when I ask songwriters, do you write every day? <laughs> Some people say yes. Others say no, and forcing it is the worst thing to do. And then there are those who say, I don't, but I wish I did. And I think, why do you, you know, why do you wish you wrote every day? Like, what do you think that would, I guess, what would that accomplish if you were, if you actually have the discipline to say, yes, I'm going to write every day? Yeah. I mean, for me, I think like what I just said is like strong, like the stronger feeling and urges that I wish that I journaled every day because it is, to me, part of the work of songwriting is just like the, the documenting and the processing. And I think yeah. that that's what journaling is. So that's more so what I wish that I did rather than writing every day. Like just being productive doesn't mean that you're, or busy. Like I've thought about this a lot, like being productive or busy doesn't mean that you're actually doing work yeah. actually, or, or like it's, or that it's good work. Um, I think there is a thing to like exercising that muscle, but that's what I'm saying is like, I feel that more with like a journal aspect of like, because you're meeting, like you're meeting yourself, like you're processing, like you're spending time to reflect and feel the feelings. And that's sometimes where songwriting, I don't want to do that every day because it's, it's very emotional, heavy work. And it's like, to me, that's not actually pleasant all the time or like a majority, of the, like it feels good once it's done, but like, it's kind of like meticulous digging and poking and prodding. Like I, yeah. I don't think that, I don't think that it's, I think my mind would be too occupied in a very like workaholic way that doesn't like feel very natural like I I write down things all the time in my phone notes maybe every day I don't really keep track of it um that way but it just comes when it comes and it, like you have to be open to it but I feel like for me personally the act of like writing every day in the way of like trying to get some kind of lyric isn't super beneficial for me yeah is it difficult to write in a time like this, I guess? And maybe not just this necessarily, but in times of intense emotion. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, does that make sense? Not just- No, it does. Yeah. I feel like it's, that's kind of always the best time for me to write. <laughs> it is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when things are like really pleasant, <laughs> I don't have as much of an urgency to process because it's like, if you're living in like Pleasantville or whatever, it's like, 
well, yeah. everything's in order and I don't really have anything to investigate too much. Um, so I, I think change and um, like difficult times. I mean, I've, my life has been fairly like, I mean, in comparison to many people who have different hardships, Yeah, you know, it's, it's been, I mean, for my particular life, it has been very difficult. There's been lots of change. There's been lots of turbulence. Sure. There's been lots of searching. Um, and so that's kind of a, a natural state for me. But just because it's like natural doesn't mean that there isn't something always new that comes up or like another another building block to that. Or I don't know. Or like more tools that you gain to like process and run run around that that difficulty and like view it in different ways so it's always been something that's pushed me to write um so I think for me it's actually easier to write you need some distance I guess is it possible to be too close to something too fresh Yes. That it's hard. You, it just, you just, yeah. So do you need some measure of distance, I guess? Yeah. Like, I mean, there's even a thing, like I had a really emotional conversation with my sister a few weeks ago and it was helpful and also hard, but I, after the call was like, I should journal about, like, I should like finish this feeling out or like process it fully. But then I was just like, I'm exhausted and that was really heavy and like there's nothing wrong with me putting on a dumb TV show and just like melting for a second like right. I don't have to exacerbate this pain or grief or whatever I'm feeling um because a lot of the times like I mean it, there wouldn't have been anything wrong with that but I just needed to rest like and in that rest you are still like subconsciously or at least I do processing stuff so yeah I think there are times where it's just too fresh because what you're going to write or what I'm going to write is going to end up being like a, a journal entry and it's not really for sharing. Like I need time to like process that. So let's talk about the nuts and bolts of the process then. So environment, mm-hmm. is there a, you know, is there a time of day? Is there a place that you tend to get your best writing done? I definitely think that I work best on like writing a song and like fully realizing the thing and putting the pieces together at nighttime Ah, um like late into the evening slash morning like because there's less distraction my phone isn't like buzzing which I have notifications turned off everything but calls and text anyway but um like my phone you know no one's trying to reach me no email is coming through even if I do check social media no one's posting at 2 a.m um so that time, just because there's less distraction, is really good for me. And it's meditative, you know, like I like having darkness and then like a lamp or some, a candle. Can, can you write for long stretches? I mean, like literally butt in the seat kind of for hours or do you need, like I can't, I'm good for about an hour and then I got to get up and walk around for five minutes. But what are you like? It, I can sit. I, like it's, I generally feel like And I've always had a job since I was like 13. So for me, like when it shifted to like, this is my job, it really is helpful for me to like, just be exhausted kind of, and then like stand up and be like, oh, fuck, like, you know, and be like, that really felt like work. Um, Not in a way that's torturous or anything, but it's just like, that was a really dedicated slab of time to this thing. Um, And I've exhausted it as much as I can for today kind of thing. That, That feels good to me, so... Yeah. Well, first of all, two part question. Do you use, because I think you mentioned this, but do you ever use a pen and pencil and paper for lyrics? That's what I'm trying to get better at now. That's why I yeah. just bought that journal while we've been. Yeah. But I, I do also write with pen. And then I think I read something the other day where somebody used a pencil and paper. And I was like, I think that would be good for me. But with like writing with a pen, I get so annoyed if I have to scratch something out and then it's like stained. (laughs) And so I'm like, oh, a pen, like duh, like a pencil would be helpful for my brain. And then, but I also actually at the same time love 
kind of being like, what was written there? And right, that's what I, I was thinking. Like, yeah, because well, it's I, like the same reason why songwriters tell me they like to use pen and paper versus computer because they can see the scratch outs and they go yeah. back to them if they need to. Yeah. Um, but but I, but I I what I never knew is how lo- brand loyal songwriters are to types of pens or pencils and even colors of ink. I mean, I could do a whole blog dedicated just <laughs> to that topic alone. I I mean, fanatical. <laughs> So yeah, do you have a favorite, like a, a color of ink or, or pen or anything like that? Um, I just got this one from Muji the other day and it's just like a normal black, but it's like a 0.5 smooth gel ink ball point pen. I don't know. Um, but otherwise I like the, um, I used to like the really thin, they're like gray and then the tip. I never know what brands. Yeah. I don't, but I also like these. What are these? Oh, cool. Okay. Um, All right. The Bilio. I don't know. They don't really bleed through. Neither does this Muji pin, which I like. Um, it's annoying to me when stuff bleeds through. Like sometimes I like the way that it writes, but I don't want it to bleed through yeah. the back of the page. So that's something that I look out for and neither of those really do um but then otherwise for notebooks i really love that i think it's like the standard or something that yeah standard issue notebook um my favorite notebook now i i'm telling you this is a whole thing all together just <laughs> pens and pencils types of notebook some songwriter told me recently that she uses uh, black ink never blue and i said why not blue and she goes because blue is for high school it's like i i I never thought of that. They feel like, you know, not professional enough. Yeah, um, that's really funny. Yeah. I, I never really tend towards blue, but I don't, for ink, even though blue is like my favorite color. Um, but it's weird. I never really, I feel like I keep blue because it's like, it's uh, it's like a love. It's like it shouldn't be mixed with like the work in that way. But I like, I really love green. Green is also like my second or like close tie to blue. And I did buy, uh, I mean, I have, I buy green pins just cause it's really? like, but it also is like a, like I garden imagery comes up a lot for me because I kept a garden with my parents growing up. And like, I know what that actually like means. And so that metaphor is like helpful for me cause I really, know about it somewhat (laughs) and um grew up around farms and so like that works for me a lot and I think it's also tied to work because it's like you have to tend to it so the color green kind of like shows like growth and work and like I don't know it's definitely been my 2020 color like I just have like acquired a lot of green like even my bedding is like this green the sweater that I've been wearing all this year is green. Like, I don't know. It's been helpful. The the green dress and wasted. There you go. See? Yeah. <laughs> See, I, I feel like the next logical thing to do then is to write in green. I think that would be an explosion yeah. of green. I bought the pins. We'll see what happens. <laughs> See? So a lot of songwriters have told me how gardening um, is a great time for song ideas. And, mm-hmm. and, and it's not so much the gardening as it is the element of repetition, repetitive movements, and whether it's walking, running, um, mm-hmm. swimming, a lot of them told me swimming, gardening, something about the repetition, some kind of repetitive movement that is a yeah. great source of creativity. So how often does that happen with you? Yeah, walking for sure, because I'm also like not having, yeah, I'm not having to speak to anyone, even if I have like my headphones on, you know, it's like I'm absorbing information I'm collecting information, but I'm not having to think about myself, um, which is extremely helpful. Like, it's never helpful for me to be like, let me write a song about like, myself or like, let, let me dwell on my, like, obviously that comes up like your internal world because you're the one processing it. But like, I think walking is such a big deal because I'm not really aware of myself in a way. I'm, it's, yeah, like you said, just like emotion that you're just not really thinking about but you're also absorbing or I am just absorbing like everything around me, especially because I grew up in such rural environments where I didn't really get to do that too much. 
everything was really spaced out and far away. Cities were far away. So like when I'm in a city still to this day, um, it's just a lot of like sensory overload, which is helpful for me and also sometimes like overwhelming. Uh, but o- overall, it's like extremely like I'm even if it doesn't spark something, it does later because I'm like documenting it in such a specific way because it's just something that I'm still not used to. It's- I, I, you know, I, I used to tell my students that that you have to understand the song that the writing process take is taking place when you're eating, walking, mm-hmm. gardening, sleeping, working out, doing whatever. Like you have to remember that the writing process is always taking place. It's not mm-hmm. just taking place when you're putting pen to paper. Totally. And I don't think I've like, when I write things, as a, you know, when I write things, I don't think I've ever written a lead in mm-hmm. front of my computer. Like my yeah. lead always comes to me when I'm doing something else, totally. because I find that if I sit there and think, what can I write? What can I write? It'll never come to me. Yeah. Um, and for me, at least those repetitive, you know, an, an activity that takes no brain power. Yeah. That's when it comes to you. Driving too. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard driving a lot, but, but, uh-huh. he, but, but I've heard with driving, it's, it's not just the repetitive motion, it's actual, um, you know, the things that you see. Totally. You're yeah. You're, you're like, you're stationary in a way, but you're, everything that's passing is just like information <laughs> that's like at rapid speed, you know? Yeah. So you only have like a split second to catch whatever is happening. Um, even yesterday, <laughs> I was walking with my friend Cass and we were talking and then I just happened to look across the street and something literally shot and broke through this window, like a glass, like this glass oh, wow. was shattered and there was like a storefront below. And I caught it, but he didn't. All he heard was the crash. And he was like, did you see that? And I was like, yeah, but that was like, a like I don't even know what I saw anymore other than like the glass splattering. And that's like a perfect example of like, I mean, that was walking, but like you have a split second to like take in that information. Um, you can observe like the aftermath sometimes or like for a little bit, but like really you only had that one second to, to process whatever happened. Um, which is like, what's cool about driving is there's like not too much time to dwell. You can't like go and stand and stare at it. It's just, it's gone. So you kind of have to like make up your mind about whatever it is you saw. <laughs> but, and I have some song, songwriters, some songwriters have told me that they specifically create times in their lives not to write. And, you know, the, the phrase is always filling the well, um, that, that there are times when they write and there are times they go out of their way not to write, to soak in those experiences. Mm-hmm. So is that something that, that you, that you do? It's maybe, it sounds like that's maybe what's happening now, but it's something you try to do in general, you know, to specifically say, I'm not going to write now. This is a time just to kind of soak it all in. I don't think it's actually ever fruitful for me to like, to be like, I need to be writing or whatever. Like the work yeah. comes when it comes. And, and a lot of the time it comes when I'm, I have time to tend to myself and to my community and to the people that I love. So it's like building a life that is rich and nourishing. And then at the work comes a lot easier because I'm, I'm doing that work while I'm doing that work. Uh, yeah. You know? And so I do think there is something to be said of like boredom or whatever, like, I always lived in rural places. So there was like very little distraction. Even when I wrote at weddings, you know, was working, blah, blah, blah. There was nothing distracting me. I didn't have like a social life, really. I didn't have, so I was just to myself a lot. And I was always like romanticizing being somewhere else and like having friends and like having all of this stuff. But something that 2020 definitely brought to me was like a remembrance of how isolation and boredom is so fruitful for me, not only with my work, but just for like my life in general. And like, I feel like I'm a better person when I have a lot of alone time. I think how much revising do you do to your lyrics and what kind of revising are, does that entail exactly? Uh, I mean, not a whole lot of revision, like when it's, when it's being written, like, like I said before, with hours, it was like I was kind of had like 
the first line I think really was the first line that was written, which was, did I run into your arms, a flower fire? And it was because I knew what I was trying to say. And that imagery kind of came, I'm an Aries and that's a fire sign. So it was like, kind of like, oh, that's good. And then like, I don't know, obviously I said like nature comes to me a lot. So like combining that, but with like emotions, but there are some things where I'm like, okay, that's too on the nose or like, I don't, I mean, it's fine when other people do it, but I like to kind of make lines go where someone's not expecting it to go. I mean, sometimes you just do it for the rhyme or whatever, but like, I don't think the things have to rhyme. Like I want it to, I don't always want it to do what someone thinks it's going to do. Like yeah. I like it to be surprising to keep interest, especially because my songs are generally kind of meditative, even in the way that they're sounding, which I didn't really realize until like press was written about at weddings. And I was like, Oh, that's a thing. You know, like I, I just was like, yeah, okay, that's sure. And then I realized that that's what I tend to lean into and in, in music that I like, even if it's like a rock song that's meditative, like Cass, like Cass McCombs, like his songs are sprawling, but like, it's really just like a, and he's like leaning into it and it builds and it might like shape shift, but it's really just like this, like meditative kind of like repetitive thing. Um, same with like someone like Grouper, it's like a sprawling kind of ambient thing. And it's kind of doing the same thing the whole time, even if there's like other elements that come up. Um, so yeah, I, I edit in the way where it's like, I get the blueprint down and then sometimes I'll go in and be like, that word could be swapped for this word, which would fit better, um, either rhythmically or just like in a way that I like want the language to present something to affect someone a certain way. So it's, it's not. I'm like, this might make more sense if I left this lyric instead of this one, but I want this to like cause something to come up in someone rather than to present an answer or like a more clear path. Um, but then like, I don't know, with Floor, for example, I feel like the first lyric that I originally, like the way that I had the lyrics arranged for that song I think, I think uh, the first lyric that I had, oh, I could go back. I want to go back, but I'm not going to. It, it was a like the night I asked you to hold you, the night you asked me to hold your keys felt like you wanted me to leave. That wasn't the first lyric. It was a different set of lyrics at the beginning. And then I swapped them around being like, that is, that's a better opening line because of whatever reason, you know, mm. it's just like, that's going to grab someone's attention more. Just like an opening line of a book. You pick it up at a bookstore. You're like, Oh, this grabs me instantly. Or some of you're like, Oh, this is already monotonous. Like in the first right, right. line or whatever. And so I try to be aware of stuff like that. Just being like, what's going to like cause someone to pay attention to this next track or whatever. Um, so you do, it's, that's a lot of organizational revision. I don't hear that very often, rather than I hear a lot of people say, switch, swap a word out. Yeah. But you're also like organizing, you know, moving lines around, almost like a, you know, I hate to say it, almost like an essay. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, that's interesting. Yeah. I I mean, it doesn't happen that way all the time, but I'm, it's like you're telling a story or you're yeah. painting a picture. So it's like which step makes the most sense for that particular uh, story or like picture that you're painting what's going to like articulate that in the way that you would like it to be articulated because it's sometimes like you could have all the same lines but if it's presented this way first and that's going to cause someone to think that this song is like fully about this one thing and you're like no it's multitude you know there's like a duet right. here which I feel like a lot of my songs hold like I'm not always really just talking about one thing most of the time especially at weddings, people are like, oh, this is about a person. I'm like, it's kind of about God. It's kind of about a person. It's kind of about, right. you know, whoever. Um, and so, yeah, the editing that I do, I feel like is like a rearranging. Yeah. And then, yeah, same with like swapping out words, but more so that kind of just like looking at it and then being like, does this paint the thing in the way that I would like it to be digested? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... Okay, last question. 
songwriters, and I always end with this, but songwriters I found are voracious readers. And again, this is a segue. You mentioned books a couple of minutes ago. Who do you like to read? Do you have favorite authors? Who? Are, what, what are you reading now? All that kind of stuff. I don't know. Right now I'm reading The Overstory by Richard Powers um, that my friend John lent me because I talk about trees a lot and I love trees. And he was like, I have a book for you. <laughs> um, and it's incredible, but it's like, you know, short stories basically in one book. And so I can like read one of those stories and then come back. Like I'm not in a rush to finish that book. Um, right. And then I'm also reading The Body Keeps the Score about, you know, processing trauma. And then I am reading, this is the one that I picked up the other day that I've been meaning to read for years, Aliens and Anorexia. It's a Chris Krauss book. Um, and I really like her writing. Um, it's because she's like such a documentation kind of person where she's like telling you about what she's experienced and like her experience, but she's also referencing like this book and this writer and this movie and this street. And I don't know, I love writing like that. Like Eileen Miles, I feel like does that a lot too. It's, it's cool to read other stuff. I'm also reading this book of poetry, Life on Mars by Tracy K. Chapman. Um, so I try to like, I've, this year I'm trying to just be more intentional about like what I am reading. So like I have like a nonfiction book, the trauma book, and then I have the short stories right now, the Richard Powers, a book of poetry. And then I, I was like, so Beth, you got to start, stop starting like four books at once and then I did it again yesterday because I found this book finally but it's fine I allow it I, I interviewed uh forgot who it was the songwriter in the past year who told me that they read multiple books at a time I could never do that I was always like I can only read one book at a time and this songwriter reads three or four books at a time mm -hmm. because then when they're not reading one they can think about the other and process it that yeah. blew my mind and it completely changed my reading habits and so now yeah. I read three books at a time I know it takes me longer to read each of them but I love the fact that when I'm not reading one I'm still thinking about it and you kind yeah. of then you go back to that book oh it's For great sure. thing. So, is that what you're doing it sounds yeah. like you're yeah that's what I do because I I feel that so hard where I'm like, ah, oh, I want to get faster at finishing, but I'm like, it's not fucking about how fast you right. process the information. But I get like, I mean, Lucy's a person where she like documents, like, this is what I read this month. And I'm like, that's amazing. Like, I want to read that much, but like, it's fine if that's not how I process information or how it works for me, because it's the same with watching movies for me. It's, it's the same as books. Sometimes I'll read a book and I can't start another one right away because I'm still like working through whatever I just absorbed. And it's yeah. a lot, it's the same with a movie. Like I just watched Miranda July's Kajillionaire a couple weeks ago and it like fucked me up. It was like so pertinent to like, even just my own experience in my life, but kind of like really visualized obviously, but also like vocalized some things that I have trouble Kind of pinning down and it just did it in such a like beautiful way that it's like I haven't really been able to watch a movie since that movie because I'm wow. still like reeling with that um so yeah I I definitely feel that way with books too but that's something where I I have that issue where I'm like oh I would like to finish this book like I'll tend towards that kind of jealousy for the way that other people kind of breeze through things but I think it's just the way that my brain is and I don't need to feel bad about it and it's fine <laughs> so okay last follow-up to that and that is how how often do do does do the things that you read ever make their way into songs are you reading things and thinking you know that could be a song idea or something like that and I guess I guess maybe you know the 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 flip side to that is how do you think reading if it does, makes you a better songwriter. If a songwriter says to you, hey, Sarah Beth, you know, why should I read novels? I'm writing songs. What do you say to that? Uh, it's just, it's just like, I, I mean, it sparks ideas, even if it doesn't have to do with the, like, even if it's not like, I'm going to transform like something in this book that happens or whatever. Because I think that's how people go. They're like, oh, well, you know, 
their mind goes to like an academia world. And it's like, well, I can't plagiarize that, but I love that thing. It yeah. doesn't really happen that way for me. I feel like it's just basically like if you're reading anyone's writing and I read lyrics too, like I was such a, um, like I loved CDs and I still love CDs. I still buy CDs because I love the lyric pamphlet and I read the lyrics. Like if I love a write, like I go and read their lyrics. Like I don't just listen to it and hope that I got it right. Like I love to see the train of thought. So it's the same with a book. It's just like, it stirs something up no matter if it's like the exact idea um, and language, like language is so beautiful and it's so interesting the way people use it. And I feel like I've had this conversation so much this year with different people, but especially my friend Britt, we were talking about like the English language is kind of built in a way to sell things to people. We can't really describe feeling that well um, or like emotion or beauty, really. It's just like, well, I can describe this like she was like, I can describe this green bottle as like it's a green bottle looks like a sprite but you know like but I can't really describe like what that brings up in me you know like other languages are better I feel like it like having language for emotion and like the verbiage and whatever is different um but regardless of the English language kind of being shitty for describing those things it's interesting to see how people use it to describe feeling and emotion it was the same with that line about like uh there's something about symmetry like there's a symmetry to letting a spiral like basically follow itself through to the yeah. end like and you know that's describing an emotion um and a feeling but it's using like what we've been given you know to do that in a very simplistic sentence so I love yeah. sentences and words and the way that people arrange things so I think that's yeah. reading books is good because people do that differently and that's it for the latest episode of Songwriters on Process. Don't forget, you can find all of my interviews with over 200 songwriters on my Songwriters on Process website at songwritersonprocess.com, going all the way back to 2010. You can read them, watch them, or listen to them. So until next time, thanks for listening.